Uh, we are moving on to the paper session, and this is a session. Uh, Vicky, would you like to stay back every year during Typo Day? Uh, we have a dedicated session where we've uh, selected the best papers from the young, and uh, we give them a short uh, presentation time. There are eight speakers. Uh, the students and uh, they have interesting topics. So you're welcome to stay back. I noticed that when you start your presentation, it was daylight, and now I can see it's, it's pitch dark in the background. So we commence that session. So uh, uh, I invite uh, Anirudh and Neha, both volunteers for typography day. Yes, yes. Your invitation uh, to your introductions. Yeah. So, hello everyone, and a very warm welcome to paper session two being chaired by Dr. Anitha Sen. We request all participants to ask their questions in the chat box. So, over to you, Dr. Anitha. So, I invite uh, the first speaker I invite is Adarsh Malviya, a student of the Industrial Design Center School of Design, uh, IIT Bombay. Uh, Adarsh, please uh, start your presentation. and. Uh, so, uh, you have 10 minutes and thanks for participating. Go ahead, Adarsh. So, uh, thank you, Typo Day, for giving me this opportunity. I'll start right away. I'm Adarsh Malviya and I worked on an interlocking Devanagari display font in my master's thesis under the guidance of Professor Girish Dalvi. Well, what is an interlocking font? Well, in such fonts, the glyphs interlock with each other to achieve various functional and aesthetic goals. In this presentation, we'll talk about how we came up with this font and our exploratory approach in the project. This area is not explored in Dignagri, but uh, there are many Latin fonts which are common that employ interlocking. And one can argue that they follow a somewhat standard system of interlocking and the idea seems to be of saving space. But not all fonts are like this. There are fonts which uh, interlock purely for decorative purposes. We also see interlocking in Arabic calligraphy. On the left, you see a uh, square prefix where the idea is to fill up a given uh, space. And on the right is Divani Jali, where the letters interlace together to appear as one piece artwork. Closer to home, we find interlocking in the monogram culture of French Nascript. I found many calligraphy and lettering artworks that happened to interlock, and it was very interesting to see them. While I was going through these artworks, I realized that the system of interlocking and uh, the visual grammar of the font go hand in hand. In other words, interlocking is not an added feature, but a core concept of the font. It's always easy to say that something is not done before, but I found this uh, hand printed holdings. That was a humble reminder that this is a pretty common practice. And uh, with this, I started my explorations of the font. The, the method was to make skeletons first and then add flesh to them. My aim was to create as broad set of exploration as possible. And uh, these are some of them. Thanks to the academic space I was in, I got constant constructive feedback. And after processing all of these explorations, we made a few promising concepts. These concepts had much more sophisticated and defined system of interlocking. This particular concept, uh, so in, in, in this concept, going with a narrow font was like a straightforward approach as it gives more space uh, vertically to fit letters in. Uh, this concept, so in, instead of having multiple glyph options, uh, in this I tried to uh, make uh, letters as pieces of jigsaw puzzle and they naturally fit with each other when uh, tied next to each other. So in, in this concept, having a crooked shapes, uh, like it, it's easier to interlock um, when the visual grammar allows you to uh, play with the structure more. And now this this font had every this concept had everything going for it. It had vertical vertically styled letters that we have seen in, in Latin as well, vertical conjuncts and a narrow proportion to play with interlocking. And we eventually decided uh, this concept from the explorations we had. And uh, this is the final font. Going back and forth uh, shows how much the font has uh, changed throughout the development process. This is the basic glyph set of the final font. And notice that the, the glyphs are designed such that they share uh, roughly the same width as other letters. So there are groups of widths. And uh, th this was an integral part of the system of interlocking and the vertical stacking of the letter. It will get more clear later in the presentation. One thing we did was to add a slight curve to, the, uh, to all the letters because since the letters are too tall, it, uh, it helped in balancing the optical illusion. While deciding the proportions, I divided the space roughly in half so that the 
uh, interlocking and the vertically stacked letters all work as modular pieces and we didn't have to do the ligature treatment for the interlocking combinations now let's get into the system of interlocking in a bit more detail so each uh, letter has different versions now of course there are more variations of a uh, is possible but this was defined by the visual grammar that we were working with now when you add a matra then the permutation sort of increases and uh, the the blue uh, one is discarded because it creates a uh, space that no other letter can fill uh, this method was replicated for all the letters and since uh, in this concept whatever happens above shirorekha is not uh, interfered we reduced all the matras to simple kana and placed them next to all the letters to figure out what all possible forms a particular letter can be in now moving forward we gave the conjunctions same treatment with interlocking as their full letter counterpart another decision that we took was to break shirorekha when it comes to vertically stacked letters we felt the shirorekha might disturb the flow of reading hence breaking the shirorekha gave the reader like it, it was better for the reader to identify the word we also have possibility the opportunity for uh, having contextual word marks basically the words that frequently appear in our language can be coded as words themselves and they may not follow the system of interlocking Uh, now since the method was primarily based on uh, permutations there are many ways of writing a particular uh, a particular word and as of now we are not saying if one is better than the other it's up to the designer to choose what they feel so they are essentially stylistic alternatives now to explain how everything comes together consider this uh, phrase as you can see vertical conjunctions are present and the first level of interlocking is direct so here in or the letter r displaces the same uh, space that fills in the same space that the letter o displaces so that there is no uh, extra white space as an outcome of interlocking the second level was to interlock glyphs within themselves in the letter b and k the matra sits on top of each other on on themselves and in the letter l well it doesn't save space but it's a stylistic alternative the third level happens when you have letters of similar width so the letter kh and va similar hence you can vertically stack them on top of each other this can be one of the functional goal of the font which is to save space in the interest of time i'll skip this slide and uh, let's look at some of the samples this is my font font without interlocking and uh, this is with interlocking now we have tried to strike a balance between the words that interlock and the words words that don't now when i was making this font i've always felt that the glyphs are sort of talking to each other as if to make space uh, similarly to a situation what we see in a local bus so hence the phrase be a circusara and uh, this is this is the next sample now uh, this project explored a wide range of ways in which you can interlock and choosing one concept uh, never meant that it was objectively better than the other i feel other than interlocking the project contributes a lot more vertically stacked letters some of the vertical conjunctions were novel and the grouping of uh, letters is uh, are something that i look forward to see in different context and with this i will thank everyone again for listening and uh, type today for giving me the, this opportunity uh, thank thank you so much ma'am yeah. thank you adarsh for keeping time as well fascinating presentation very beautifully done lovely work uh you know what we'll do we we'll take questions at the end of the session so please stay on and uh, we can then have a you know a comprehensive discussion session at the end okay right thank you adarsh once again